Hello there. Today I am joined by Susana Franco, who is a senior lifestyle and PR executive. She is a former news reporter, news anchor, news producer with about 10 years of experience at least, and a former graduate of SDSU and the City College program, the radio TV film program, which is where I know you from yes. because you used to be my student long ago. And I brought Susana in here today to talk a little bit about career, her career, and to give advice about anyone who's thinking about going into this industry. So tell me about your early days in media. How did you actually break into the field? It started in high school. I loved to write, and my English teacher noticed, she's like, you love to write. I'm like, I do. And she said, you should join my journalism class, my print journalism. I'm like, print journalism, what's that? And she introduced me to journalism, and I fell in love with it right away. I love the fact that I can get out of class and go interview students and teachers and coaches and then write about the stories that I hadn't covered. And from there, I was hooked. She's like, San Diego State has a great program. That's my alma mater. I highly recommend it if you want to get into broadcast journalism. And so thanks to her, I ended up at San Diego State in the broadcast journalism department. Wow. And then you found your way to city somehow, right? Yes. You had some more experience um, over there. I knew that after having one internship, I knew I needed more hands-on experience. So a friend, Tony Sanchez, told me about New Scene, where you can actually put, be part of a half-hour news program, and that really intrigued me. And so I went there, I spoke with you, and I loved the whole concept about being able to try my hand at anchoring, producing, um, reporting, and even behind the camera and editing. And uh, that's where I was able to get a resume tape, and um, that helped me land my first job in Yuma, Arizona. What was that like? That was interesting. So a lot of people was like, you have to go to a small town, a small market to cut your teeth, to hone your skills. And obviously everybody's like, no, I want to stay in San Diego or I want to stay in the bigger markets because I had had internships. I started working at KOSI as a producer, writer, producer. So actually going back, I interned at KOSI and I got my first gig writing and then moved up to producing and I stayed there for three years. And um, that was while I was taking new scenes. So I was doing that um, in, in uh, hand in hand. And then I found out about a job in Yuma. And thanks to you who pushed me and said, give that news director a call. You always need mentors, somebody who's always guiding you because there's that fear of like, what if I don't make it? So I gave that news director a call. I said, I have a resume tape. Let me drive up there and you know, let's meet in person. I did. And a week later, they called me and said, we want to hire you. And moving to Yuma was interesting because um, you're really not learning everything from scratch because you get that in your internships and you get that when you're working in the field, whether you're producing or writing. But being on camera, you really get to build your confidence. You really get to hone your skills, get the deer of the headlights um, out of the way, that look, um, and just build your confidence, which is so important when you're trying to make that jump to your next market and to get to your goal market, what we call it. Um, I was able to do that after two and a half years in Yuma, come back to San Diego, and I was lucky enough to get a job at CW as an anchor reporter. Now, the, the work that's expected of you when you get to San Diego is you're going to the higher markets. What was the difference? So in Yuma, you're expected to do everything. You, you wear several hats, so I booked for the show. I produced the show, I anchored the show, and I also went out and reported. So going from the anchor desk, I would grab a camera. If there was some breaking news, and I would run out um, and cover stories in 110, 120 degree weather. And I think so there's, it's not a lot, glamorous. there's a lot of <laughs> students and a lot of just people in general who have no idea that some reporters have to actually shoot and edit their Absolutely. own material. You're a one-man band. And I preferred it that way because I wanted to learn every aspect mm -hmm of a newsroom, of being in the field, um, and it makes you a stronger journalist, being able to, and then when you do eventually jump up to a bigger market, you don't have to wear all those hats, you can work better with a photographer, you can work better with the editor, because you've been there, you've been in their seat, so it's just a better relationship, and you understand the work mm -hmm. that goes into it. And you mentioned something, we, you know, probably could talk about this in a whole separate interview for five or seven minutes, but you mentioned a demo reel, mm -hmm. that you took your demo reel to mm -hmm. Yuma. If someone's going to try to put a reel together to show themselves and show their skills, what should people put on the reel? Um, from reporting to weather to sports to anchoring, everything that you've done, 
to show the news director um, your skills, what you're capable of, how you sound on camera, how you look on camera, and the type of stories that you can tell in a concise way. I did that. My first reel that I uh, did was as an intern at the WB when we had a WB here in San Diego. I knew I wanted to take that internship seriously. A lot of students don't. They just go in there and maybe like, oh, I'll meet some people. But no, I tagged along with the reporters. I tagged along with the anchors. And I said, I want to learn from you. And I really want to take something out of it and something tangible. So I went in there. I did a semester and I came out with a demo reel. And that helped me understand what I needed to do because I'm like, I know I need to get a demo reel in the hands of a news director in order for them to take me seriously and see that I'm serious um, about my professional career. Mm -hmm. And um, going to Yuma is probably similar, similar to San Diego in that there's, there's a border town nearby, mm -hmm. a lot of Latinos. How useful was being bilingual? Oh, it was, I mean, it helped me tremendously being able to communicate from, with people on both sides and just the type of stories that I'm able to cover and pitch and um, be, being able to communicate and interview those people and then translate into English is, mm -hmm. I mean, to me, it's really helped me in my career um, land those specific jobs in those towns. So I know that, uh, you know, things ended at CW here because mm -hmm. they ended up closing the building basically and selling and all that. And so you and a lot of other people were kind of left hanging at that point. And, and uh, you decided to make a very interesting transition. Instead of just going across the street to another station, you ended up breaking into a whole different field of public relations. How did that happen? Well, it was an interesting time in my life where I had started a family. I had two kids, Emma and Sebastian, and I was, the hours, um, even a lot, a lot of people think going into TV news, it's glamorous job, it's glamorous field. Well, it can be. It's also very difficult because of the hours. And as a mom, um, I wasn't interested in working the evening shift because I wanted to be there for my family for dinner time and bedtime. And that's ultimately what, um, compelled me to make that switch from journalism, from TV to PR, just because I didn't want to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning anymore. Um, I wanted to give them my energy and my attention, and working remotely as a PR agent sounded magnificent at the time. <laughs> um, I'm glad I made the switch, and it was a good, it's a good balance. Um, I do feel like I have the best of both worlds. I get to, I say I'm a stay-at-home mom with a career, um, while they're in school or in daycare, I work, you know, four or five hours. It's amazing what you can do if you just dedicate your time in four or five hours. You can probably get more done than you do in an eight-hour day in the office. Mm -hmm. And I'm blessed enough to work for a company that allows me to do that. Um, and the transition was fairly easy, e easy, easier than I thought and anticipated because as also here in CW, I wore several different hats. I booked for the weekend morning. I anchored and I reported during the weekday. So booking, I worked very closely with PR executives and agents in town, and so I would see the type of work that they'd send my way. So I try to emulate that when I transition into PR, and that really helped me. Mm -hmm. um, the fields are very closely aligned. It's under the media umbrella. So I feel like a lot of people do transition from journalism, broadcast journalism, into PR. It's an easy transition. Um, and I love it. I love it. I do it remotely. I help people... Um, do me I do media coaching for clients. I help them get media attention, whether it's on TV, radio, print, or with influencers and bloggers now, which are a huge, huge aspect in the media world. Let's talk about that a little bit. Tell me about these influencers. I keep hearing you talk about these influencers, and I didn't even know what that was until the first time I went to your company. They are really changing the game. They're really changing the way brands and companies reach out to millennials and just to consumers in general. A lot of millennials don't want to be advertised to or marketed to anymore. They want to be told a story. And that's where having that journalism background is really important and it's really useful for you in your career. I don't want to sit here and say, this is a great product because it's shiny, it's new. Like Those are just boring talking points. Tell me a story that's compelling, that's really going to drive somebody to go out there, click on your website and purchase something. Like, how can they relate to your story? And that's what makes people, you know, want to know more about your brand. And there are brands and companies that say, hey, can you talk about my company or can you support my company? I'll send you some samples. And when somebody who has 100,000 
followers on their social media post something about a jewelry line or you know a makeup line there's people that follow them that will tend to buy that product and is there proof that let's say those earrings that mm -hmm. I'm, I, I'm a company that makes jewelry and I ask you can you wear them and can you post it on Instagram if tag is me. there is yeah. there proof that the sales skyrocket yes there is a return on investment that's a, a terminology that we use ROI what's my return on investment social PR it's what we call it now and it's huge and a lot of brands do see a big return on their investment more so, so than just PR that's amazing so mm -hmm. centered around that arena of social media and public relations what are some job titles that people should look for that younger people should look social for? media specialist I mean if that's something that you're constantly on the phone you're constantly on social media you can make money off of that working for a company somebody in our generation where we're just like that's not our thing and you're good at that then somebody might want to hire you for those skills um, it's a skill set that you're building that mm -hmm. is useful for you and also and you love taking a lot of selfies a lot of pictures there's companies that there's say a lot of you that like to take of, selfies, yeah, selfies. <laughs> um, they'll say hey I need some some pictures taken some really cool pictures in a trendy way um, and that's a job now wow. um, somebody who can build website content content on your website in a really fun aspect and a really fun way where it'll catch somebody's attention. Mm -hmm. It seems like anything can catch anybody's attention right. nowadays if it's just right. done with taste, right? right? Absolutely. And unfortunately, there is some public relations where it's not so much with taste, right. but a little it, still, it still gets out there, right. Uh, right. which is probably not something your yeah. company pushes. And that No, well, the, that's the thing. There's so much out there and there are entrepreneurs too. It's a field that I really was open to when I jumped into PR because I work with a lot of small to medium sized companies mm -hmm. where they're, they're entrepreneurs who have an idea and made it come to fruition because they saw a need and they filled that need and it's really inspiring to me and it really is something that a lot of people are doing now. Yes, that's yeah. hard to believe. Yeah, the and biggest influencer is a seven-year-old uh, Ryan's Toy Reviews, and he unboxes toys, and he's making $22 million a year, him and his family. So, And so because of your experience being in front of the camera, you're now being pulled into doing some of these lifestyle yes. se segments, so that's which where is my, on TV. Right? Yes, that's where my unique title comes as Senior Lifestyle and PR Executive. I do a lot of TV segments. For example, right now, over the holidays, I must have done 15 TV segments with holiday gift idea roundups where I've traveled from KTLA to Good Morning Arizona to a lot of here in San Diego where we present some brands and say these are great gift ideas and this is why and the clients love that because they know that I have credibility having been on camera and that I will present their brands in a very credible way. Do you have any final thoughts or advice for anybody who might be watching either a student getting out of university or even somebody that's wanting to switch careers from journalism to PR. Mm -hmm. Any final thoughts? I would say if it's something that you're really open to, go try it out first. Go do an internship or shadow somebody who's in the field to see if it's for you. Um, but if you already know that's what you really want to do, it's an easy transition. I didn't, never thought I'd end up doing PR. I was, you know, broadcast journalism, that's my thing, and I'm going to stick to it. Obviously, because of life and having a family, I was uh, um, drawn to working remotely from home. Um, and I was able to make that transition, and it was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Just because it's under the same umbrella, I work closely with PR executives as a booking producer at CW and the anchor. Um, I'd see the press releases that would come through. So I'm like, okay, I see how it's done and I know how we can do it. And also you're thinking, as a producer on TV, you're thinking what works for TV, the angles that work. So when you're on the PR side, you have that knowledge. So it's a lot easier. Like this would make a great TV segment and you set it all up for them. And there's no way the producer can say no to that. Like you've basically done all the work for me. Thanks. Come on in. Mm -hmm. And that's what helped me and led me to do lifestyle segments. I set up entire segments for the producer. I just walk in with the products, set up for them, and it's an easy day for them. 
Awesome. Susanna, thank you so much. I really appreciate her being here today and all the great advice that you gave. I am especially proud of you. Thank you. Because I knew you long ago when you were just a budding uh, <laughs> student, just trying to learn it all. And to see where your career has gone over the years is really, it's really something to thank see you. you. I used what? to watch you on Saturday mornings as an anchor. I'd be like, oh my goodness, there's my, there's my little student. So thank you once yes. again. And, and thank you. Yeah, thanks, to you. Thanks to you, I am where I am. Thank you. Let's hope that something that you said will catch on to somebody out there that might, might be where you were 10, Absolutely. 15 years ago, right? Absolutely. And I'm always open to help anybody who's, who's needing it. You can find me on social media. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thanks.